about a year and a half ago, I made a video on the Fisher Price controller. I'll put a link up there if you need it. I made it for two reasons, really. One, I thought it'd be a fun gaming related thing to talk about on the channel. And two, my daughter threw up in it. So I need to take it apart anyway. The good thing about the controller is it had a fun pack secret in there for any diehard gaming fan. I'm sure you'll know if you've seen the video. So I can only assume as a result of that video, or in fact two videos, the Fisher Price has gone out and launched a brand new range of retro inspired toys. It's either that reason or the fact that retro tech's so mainstream now that it is creeping into baby toys. But to be fair, when I was a toddler, I used to have a pull on rotary phone, so it's not exactly a new thing. The new range of toys comes with the tagline, let's be 80s kids, and you can't blame them really. They have a boombox, a mixtape, the one that sparked the most interest for me, the Game Boy inspired Little Gamer. That's right, L Little Gamer. Okay, so let's take it out of the packaging and have a look. So whilst I struggle to get this out of the cardboard, let's have an ad break. As you can see, it's got your standard Game Boy feel with the uh, classic D-pad and A and B buttons. It's missing the start and select and has this giant rocker on the side. Uh, the screen is obviously just a sticker. Uh, in lieu of a cartridge, it's got this kind of spring out cartridge. And on this side, we've got a couple of uh, well, two Tronomos and a Tetronomo. Look at that, three and four. Tetris pieces, keep that gaming feel. And an on off switch on the side. Pretty good. As with most Fisher Price toys, whatever you tend to press or accidentally knock as you trip over it, it tends to set it off. Either give me a jolly tune or a educational yeah. tip bit. I didn't expect the bounce. So the question you're probably all here for is does it have the Konami code built in? So let's give it a go. Yes, it does. So of course that's the Konami code. I think if Fisher Price dropped it from this, there would have been a huge backlash because it probably wasn't the controller. All in all, nice little toy. Uh, to save this turning into a toy review channel, I'm going to open it up, look inside. I'm expecting a blob of resin and a few controller pads, but let's have a look and see. Cut. Es 1989. Estiras tus brazos y piernas mientras preparas tu grabadora con la canción que te hará sacar tus mejores pasos. Cuando de pronto... Despiertas y te das cuenta que tu hijo tiene mucho más ritmo. Conecta con tu bebé y la radio portátil baila y aprende de Fisher Price.
Surprisingly, the chip is visible, and it's not under resin. It's a bit hard to read, but I think it's GPCE1S16A. It's been hard to track down the information on this exact chip, but I believe it's related to the GPCE128A, which, unsurprisingly, is a sound controller with a 64K ROM, and it's looked to be designed to work with interactive toys. And that's pretty much all there is to it. There's the contacts for the buttons and a multicolored LED, as well as a few various resistors. But there's also this unpopulated region on the board. I've got no idea what it's for. It looks like it's for some switch, but they must have changed it very late in the design because there's even a hole in the front for it, just with this blanking plate. I tried shorting it, but nothing happened. I guess there's nothing programmed in the microcontroller for it. If it's to mimic a start button, then it's also a bit odd that they didn't bother putting the select in. And it's also a bit small compared to the other side childlike buttons of the rest of the controls. Anyway, as you can see, there's a screen, and I use that term loosely, and it's a separate piece of plastic, which makes sense as it needs to let the light through. And the cartridge, which is probably glued together, so I'm not going to pry it open, and it just has a spring in the bottom. And there we have it. So I'm going to put it all back together, see if it still works, and see what other features it has. So when comparing to its inspiration, you can see it's slightly shorter, but otherwise very close to the original DMG in size. And compared to probably its actual inspiration, the teal Game Boy Color, as, let's face it, it has got a color screen, is again close, but it's missing out on the slender curves of the original, and the shade of teal is slightly off. Okay, so while editing, I was going through the TV ads, and I noticed this. No, not that. This. A felty little clue. So it looks like there was supposed to be a button there. I wonder if it was the version with the button on. Did the animators get sent one with the two buttons on? In searching around, I found one. There is a version with the button still on. It's a switch for changing the language. In this case, English or French, for the Canadian market. So to do it, you need to hold the button for four seconds, which I definitely didn't do when shortening it before. So, let's open it up again and give that a go. English. Oh. English. Ah, oh, for a second I thought it was going to change to French. English. Obviously the logic's there for switching, but they've just English. got the one language on there. And I don't know why they bother taking the button off. English. Nigel Farage would have loved pressing this. So I contacted Fisher-Price and they sent me a poorly formatted list of languages they support. I don't think it's an official one, but on the list was a Benelux model, which I managed to track down. And it has a whopping five languages. Dutch, French, German, Italian and English. Why didn't we get that version? They could have just given that out to everyone. Maybe it needs a bigger ROM on the microcontroller, but I'd have paid a bit more for it. As a year's more entertainment and education for the kids. So if you're watching Fisher-Price, because it'll that be your next one. But at least that's the mystery solved. Obviously, somewhat less of a mystery for Dutch or Canadian. Also, the other mystery that turned out to be slightly less mysterious, due to the whopping great big clue on the side of the box that I failed to notice, is the big advert for the Konami code. Well, I'm glad I didn't see it and spoil any surprises. So finally, let's compare the songs to potentially their gaming inspiration. And if you're quick, see if you can guess what they are, and let me know how many you got in the comments.
And there we have it, The Little Gamer by Fisher Price, a fun little toy for any gaming family. And if you got this far and you liked the video, a thumbs up and a subscribe would be amazing. But most of all, thanks for watching.